Hey, what's going on, guys? So I just got hit with the biggest piece of nostalgia. So I'm walking through the park like usual. There's a lot of pro uh, summer programs going on for kids right now. So I'm kind of having to zigzag around to avoid them. Lots of little groups, but so I cut through the middle of the park right now to save some time on the walk. And it like, I, it reminded me of doing three a days on a high school football. And I, I actually like kind of smelled the, the smell of like sweaty football pads right now, which probably was not actually there. But my brain, I guess, just really associated that smell with the nostalgia. So it's probably why I was smelling that. God, it takes you, takes you back. And it's funny because <laughs> while I was experiencing all of that, it most certainly was not fun. <laughs> I was, uh, I, felt, I felt like I was on the verge of uh, getting like heat, heat stroke and I was suffering every day out there. I was a fat kid too. So when you're outside doing physical activity for almost nine hours of the day, uh, it gets pretty rough. And back then, they used to do shit like not give us appropriate water breaks in an attempt to get uncommitted people off the team. We'd have to do a lot of stuff like that. I'm sure anyone out there who's played like a hardcore, like teenage sport kind of gets that too. Cause you got a bunch of kids that maybe they just want to be involved with something but they don't want to put in the work. So what a lot of like, well, I don't know if they still do it, but a lot of the coaches would do is give us like incredibly hard physical tasks one after the other and you just see people dropping like flies which is funny because like the very first one earlier in the year was like everyone show up at 6 a.m uh so many days a week we're going to do morning lifting and that alone would take a lot of people out because who the fuck wants to wake up at 6 a.m and go lift or you have to be up before things you have to be there at six so you know who wants to wake up at like 5 a.m and then go fucking lift when you're like 16 years old so that, that was an, another easy way to just, you know, weed people out. But after that, be like running up and down bleachers over a hundred times. And you can only like step on the part people sit on. So there's that big gap. And as you get more tired, your foot can miss the step and you're going to trip up the stairs and really hurt yourself because you're just banging into metal bleachers real hard. Uh, and like I would see people, they'd start barreling down the stadium stairs because they fell like that and they just kept tumbling down all those stairs which i can't imagine how much that actually fucking hurts being how old i am now but it's almost like they took advantage of uh kids bones being like rubber and just <laughs> they're gonna do shit like that but <laughs> it was like that and then three a days which it'd be like like a two and a half hour practice for offense two and a half for defense and then like another two to two and a half for special teams um so you just be but like with that being said like even if you're not playing that position like you're there and you're having to work real hard still it's just that the emphasis for improvement might be on those different um those different parts of the game so if someone needs to like shape their offense up what you could do is like have the defenders like strategically go into formations that the offense uh, the offensive coordinator wants them to and then just keep running through those scenarios over and over so that people can adjust they get an idea of what they're seeing and they just keep going same thing with defense like having the offense do specific things and putting putting them in hard situations to get out of and really getting everyone's teamwork together so like that stuff is important but Man, it was fucking hard. And a lot of people didn't make it. I was fortunate enough that I, I I did make it past all those trials. But I was by no means a good player. Uh, I was like playing on a destroyed knee. And like not fully wanting to accept that my body structurally couldn't put up with the demands of the sport. So the coach actually 
worked me pretty hard because he did not like me very much because of that. Um, but again, like I think I talked on a previous video, it's kind of funny because, you know, as a responsible adult, you should have uh, pulled a kid like me to the side and be like, hey, buddy, you're not you're not going to be playing for a while. But, I mean, that's not what they did, but they would still get pissed off at me. Like, even seeing I could barely bend my leg and shit, so. And limping pretty hard, so it's not like it was a, like, hidden fact that I was messed up. Uh, but that's, like, the kind of stuff that happens. It's really funny, though. Like, all that was so hard. But it's, like, kind of... It's, like, kind of nostalgic at this point. So, like, I was going to go to the stop sign and just take me out right now. I guess it's kind of because, like, you you just did a very hard thing. So, <laughs> over time, you like, like you grow to appreciate, I guess, like, the way that sculpted you into the world. And you have nostalgia later on. But <laughs> I, I just, I remember it was not fun in the moment. I guess there's many other things like that in life, but I, I don't know. I, maybe Maybe it's... A heartwarming feeling because it's so far in the past i don't know at the time it was hard to make sense of especially when you're a kid but i think a lot of that stuff really does it builds character and resilience and tenacity and i think those are all important characteristics for someone like just going into life not just a sport because if you work if you consistently work your body very very hard over a period of time for a common goal with others um like just the 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 uh, stress management skills and everything that comes with that it it makes you a more versatile person when it comes to going into any endeavor in life because you just put in all that physical effort with your body to accomplish something so you're n you're not a stranger to hard work like you know what it takes and you know if you can put yourself through stuff like that Anything else in life isn't going to be that hard. So it definitely does help. And it could even be like an office job setting. It just gives you... It gives you an idea of like... What high level of, perf of uh, results you need to output... To reach whatever destination you're trying to get to. And that's why I think sports are incredibly important. Because... If you have an uncoachable kid, it's going to be an unemployable adult. People need to learn to work together, get better, and be able to be honest with themselves. Because if you're not honest with yourself, you could have something going terribly wrong in your output of performance. And you're not going to accept what that might be for, your, to, for reasons to protect your own ego. So you could just be going through the same motions over and over. And instead of improving and learning how to get get out of certain situations, what you end up doing is avoiding them and hoping they don't come by or they come by sparingly. Because instead of learning how to get past a certain situation, people might be like, well, whenever that comes, I guess I'll take a loss, but I'm going to win so much at everything else, it's not going to matter. And while it definitely gets you by, I think that's a line in the sand that separates someone from being a a jobber and excellent at what they do. A jobber is just kind of someone who, they're just there for the paycheck. They're going through the motions. They might not even do the bare minimum, but they know they could get away with it. It's kind of what a jobber is. And that's most people. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. If everyone was an overachiever, overachieving would not be a thing. Everyone would just achieve. But because there's so much variance with everybody and a lot of people are underachievers or complacent or they just they don't have a drive to do better those people kind of set the baseline so that anyone that does more than that and goes above and beyond they're considered excellent excellent because they're doing the extra things to get the extra results so it just comes down to how do you how do you want to view yourself as a person? How do you want others to view you? Like do you want to be known as the guy that 
always busts his ass or you want to be known as the guy that just kind of shows up both those people are recognized but one of them is actually respected and you don't need everyone's respect to get by in this world but if you find like-minded individuals or not i mean not just like-minded but also people that have achieved well for themselves in this life at whatever you're trying to do um you kind of want their approval just because it's a sign that you're doing the right things it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because you have to be honest with yourself and say hey i'm not doing enough right now and i need to do more and stuff like that it really helps cultivate a mindset of someone who's gonna do whatever it takes so do you want to do whatever it takes or do you just want to be the person who gets by i don't know you let me know have a good day everyone i'm gonna get ready for work see you on the next one